In this video, we'll discuss the Rhythm Editor, the place where a rhythm is being created and edited. But first, what is a rhythm? Well, it's a collection of loops, usually hundreds of them, enough to give M Drummer a solid variety human drummers have. You already know there are five loop types, intros, beats, breaks, long breaks and outros. And each type have 12 loop boxes associated to 12 keys on a piano keyboard. The higher the key, the higher the complexity. Each loop box can contain any number of loops. The loops may not necessarily start on the first quarter, so these are often more like short performances than loops. That's it. Now, how to edit that. Let's explore the Rhythm Editor. Three panels on the top, Globals, Playback and Settings, you already know from Quick Setup Rhythms Tutorial. I'm going to stay on the Channel 1, so I set my MIDI controller to MIDI Channel 1 too. The loop selector is where we find all loops of the rhythm. I can select any of the keys of the loop boxes and, on the right, there's the list of loops in it. I can add any number of loops into each loop box or remove all of them. When you command M Drummer to play a loop box with no loops, it just finds the nearest one where there are some instead. When you click on any of the loops, it will immediately be shown in the loop editor, and this is where the magic happens. On the left, we can see a list of all used tracks, each with an icon and name of the drum it should play. Remember, M Drummer uses drum types, not MIDI keys. This way, everything always works between drum sets and rhythms. You can have as many tracks as you like. Commands like Insert, Delete, Solo, Mute, etc. can easily be reached if you right-click somewhere here. You can also drag a track to reorder them and double-click on a track to select all notes on it. In the centre, there are the actual notes, each shown as a diamond. If you look closely, you'll notice that each diamond is filled by a colour. The colour level corresponds to the note's velocity. For a quick velocity change, use a mouse wheel. A note can also be smaller, which means that it probably is lower. That's right, each note can have a probability of being played. And quite some more, but we'll get to that. The white triangle on the top shows a current playback position. To change it, Click on a dark bar here. You can also click using a middle mouse button anywhere. Its position, as well as position of notes being edited, is quantized by the quantization value set in the quantization panel. To set a new value, click on these two arrows or select it in a pop-up window. Of course, you can change its depth or turn it off completely. The button with two cogs requantizes selected notes. If none is selected, all notes will be requantized. To insert a new bar before the loop, click on the left arrow. To delete a bar, click on a trash bin button above. And if you need it after the loop, click on the right one. To duplicate a bar, hold Ctrl while clicking on the arrows. The copy and paste buttons let you copy any bar to any other. Use this slider for zooming in and out. Now to some editing. By default, the pen edit mode is selected. Click on the grid to insert a note with these settings on the right. To delete a note, use a right click. Hold Ctrl key to select notes and add Shift to add notes to the selection. Then you can move the selected notes while holding Ctrl or 
delete them using a delete key or copy them using the copy button in the title. Eraser tool is a kind of an opposite. Select a tool is more interesting. It's similar to the pen mode if you'd be holding the control key. But there's one little perk. If you change the note parameters on the right, they are applied to the entire selection. Cool for more complex editing. I copied a few notes a few moments ago, right? Well, to paste them, set the locator wherever you want to put them and click on the Paste button. New few buttons are pretty obvious. Trash button destroys all notes. The next one is more interesting. Record button lets you record the notes you play using a MIDI controller. Just press it and play. It's usually faster and more natural than clicking stuff with your mouse. Load and Save buttons let you store the loop as a file. Pressing Generate button creates a completely new loop by combining parts of other loops, and MDrummer comes with thousands of them. A great source for new grooves. And then there are a few more functions available under the button. Well, functions. Time to check the note properties. In selector mode, touching this changes all selected notes. In pan mode, these simply define the parameters of the new notes. Which properties do the notes have? Velocity and pitch are obvious. The rest of them, not so. Let's see what they do. The inaccuracy defines timing of our virtual performer, or in other words, how precisely it can follow a metronome. Here is my very straight loop. Listen to what is happening to a snare when I increase the inaccuracy. The higher the value, the more amateur it plays. Note, the inaccuracy is random. The offset shifts time of a hit too but to a fixed value. And there's one important feature of it. It is constant, no matter what tempo you play. In other words, it's defined by time, not by measure. So it's very different to just disable quantization and moving a note than changing its offset. What is it for? Flams, for example. If you want your drummer to play two notes close to each other, no matter what the tempo is, the offset will be the tool to do that. Deflection sets the random deviation from the note's velocity. So, by adjusting the inaccuracy and deflection, you define a human side of your virtual drummer. By the way, to reset a value to its default, simply right-click on it, like with any parameter in Melder plugins. Use the probability to create some variety in the loop. I'll add one more snare and set 50% probability for these two hits. Let's listen. And this is the same bar. The minimal and maximal level properties relate to the level parameter over here or on the quick setup rhythm panel.
They set, so to speak, a threshold for played notes, and you can, in a way, create nearly infinite levels of complexity using these parameters. If the level is lower than minimal level, a note won't play. And if the level is higher than the maximal value, again, a note won't play. Shuffability controls if the note can be shuffled using the shuffle control above here. Normally all controls are shuffled, but in modern hip-hop, for example, rhythms often are shuffled, but not quite. It's like some notes are a bit out of time. So here's the way to do that. The last panel I must mention is the edit. Here you can set the signature for the entire rhythm and it must match the signature of your song in your DAW in order to make the M drummer in sync properly. Break length and break interval work with the length and time of breaks. Nothing you'll need every day. And there are many more advanced editing features available via the rhythm processing button. If you ever get lost, don't forget about a comprehensive built-in help system. Just click on one of these question marks. See you next time.